Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. The time to say yes to your dreams and aspirations is here. once again and welcome to another edition of our instagram live uh, session my name like i always say has not changed my name remains azu arinze and our guest tonight is mrs gloria anozie young mrs young is an actor broadcaster and writer she is married to the veteran and methodical actor mr norbert young according to wikipedia not according to azu arinze she was born on February 4, 1967, and that makes her 54 years old. She is originally from Ohuhu, if, I, if I'm correct now, in Omaha, Abia State, but she's now married to a Delta. Mrs. Gloria Ijoma Anozie Young had a primary educa ed education at Fountain Primary School in Sulere, Lagos. Her secondary was at the Popular Methodist Girls High School in Yaba also in Lagos. Afterwards, she proceeded to Thomas Jefferson High School for her A-levels in Dallas, Texas. She was also, she was also at L, L Center College, also in uh, Dallas. The duo of uh, Liz Benson and Jennifer Mekosai, after watching her on the Charlie Boy show, convinced her to audition for Glamour Girls 1, where she ended up landing the role of Doris. The rest, like we say in Nigeria, is history. Now, her other works include Izozo, Back to Life, Half of a Yellow Song, Idemuza, Flee, Strain, etc., etc. Friends, fans, followers, join me as I welcome my sister, my friend, G-A-Y, Gloria Anose Young. <laughs> to this instagram live uh, session thank you very hello, very much everyone. hello everyone i'm seeing some of my friends joining i see my sister all right that's very nice <laughs> and that's the word nice. is uh, ho, ho, uh, in, in abia state in abia 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 state yes. abia 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 and, it's, all right. and it's february 5th not 4th Okay, February feet. Okay, I'm saying what I got from uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they right. forgot some things, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, are you ready? We can start, right? I'm ready. <laughs> all right. Now you've been acting for decades now. What would you say has kept you going? Um. What would I say has kept me going? Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, the fact that I enjoy what I'm doing, the fact that um, I am motivated by a social responsibility towards my fans, um, I think my husband also motivates me, and um, I get some kind of thrill in my blood while I'm acting, so maybe that's it also. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Now, I, need, I, need, I need you to share with us your most memorable acting experience the most memorable one my most me every single one has been memorable everyone i i don't think i know anyone i don't know most memorable uh, maybe we'll talk about the recent ones <laughs> As, do you know how many years we're talking about <laughs> i know i know but there must be one that stands out uh, everyone, everyone is important. Everyone stands out. Every single one. I remember um, 
my very first one naturally and i remember my last one <laughs> so um my very first one which is glamour girls um it was quite memorable it was my first time i was in the midst of professional actors and i was you know held like a baby i was treated very well um let me use this opportunity to say kudos to liz benson jennifer okiri osai rest in peace because he is all new. Uh, um they all made me feel welcome they didn't make me feel like a rookie they didn't treat me like someone who didn't know what she was doing they, they helped me you understand and i think that was a nice passage for me um uh if the, if i hadn't had them to help me i probably would have run away <laughs> so they did a good job they helped me interesting yeah. now what, what makes a good uh, actor what makes a good actor mm. yeah what makes a good actor well not just learning your lines not just you know having your lines and having them in your head um, memorizing them uh, you also must be able to play the character so well that it takes over who you are. Um, that is what that makes a good actor. Um, en encompassing the whole character of the role you're playing and changing yourself entirely. Yeah. All right. Now, wh what is the commonest mistake that most actors make? Taking, taking themselves for granted. Yeah. taking everything they do for granted not being aware not being in the moment not not being conscious of every single time they are there that's it that's the major mistake of all actors make especially the recent ones the new yes. ones all right now is it uh, really necessary you know for an actress or an actor to have a theater training before plunging into acting Oh no, I didn't have a theater training, so yeah. I don't think so. Um, even if it's to learn under the tutelage of someone, yes, that helps. You should be able to be articulate, to speak well, to know how to learn your lines, to to you know to be able to you know um, internalize your character um, and work at it. So you don't necessarily have to go to the four year school to be a good actor just right. don't take it for granted just be conscious all right now between stage and home video which one do you prefer hey as a charity name now so <laughs> hey you want to put me for trouble <laughs> actually i i i enjoy doing stage in fact i get the thrill of stage is stronger for me than for um film i think that has to do with all the amount of rehearsals that you have to go through um working with the other characters and building something you don't want to let go because you have worked on it day after day sometimes you sleep and you wake up and you're remembering your lines sometimes for instance my husband is in the bathroom and he's saying his lines as he's having a bath and you know just to be able to make sure he remembers it and remembers you know gets into the character and then when you get on that stage it's make or break -o. if you forget <laughs> one line you're in trouble if you forget one movement you're in trouble you know but the others are all around you and they're helping you they're prodding you so uh, um and then at the end of the show the thrill is unimaginable i i, I can't describe it <laughs> interesting interesting now so what what is really you know the major difference you know between acting on stage and their home video oh there's a there's lots of difference now uh, if you're on stage you you getting on stage in the first instance you need at least two weeks at least two, two weeks of rehearsals on a daily basis between four to six hours um you don't really need that for television or for home video and all of that um for home the video basically maybe because of um the time constraints economy and all the rest they want you to go and do your work yourself so you go focus on your lines get your lines show up that day get into character pa, 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 pa. that's how it is 
the first stage you must prepare, 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 prepare. Even 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 just the dressing alone takes its own time. You understand, and and that's part of it. And then there's a lot of glamour in uh, television. There's a lot of um, feel good and all of that. Um, you know, and I guess that's where the thrill is and the attraction is for a lot of people. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Now, acting, yeah. obviously, you know, has done a lot for you. What have you done for acting? Oh, I have done quite a lot. Um, I, um, I have taught children. I had a children's troop. Um, uh, first set of kids I had were from the age of uh, four. My daughter was one of them. She was the youngest. She was four then. And then um, four till about 13. Then I had another set. Um, uh, they were between the ages of 11 and 14. Then I had a third set, older kids. We even took um, some recommended um, literature all the way to Abuja, performed it on stage for, you know, children, for schools, you know. So I have given back in my own way. Um, I do not, um, apart from that, apart from teaching children especially, um, I have um, tried to work with my peers especially. I do not hesitate in telling them when I see there's something wrong. I just pick the right time, you know, and I'm very well known for that. Auntie Gloria, don't come again. Well, that's basically it, you know. Uh, um, I want to use this opportunity to also say, even the Catholic Church has um, recognized my prowess in working with children and have called me a few times to work with their kids. Um, and we've done a few shows with the children in the catholic church yeah interesting we'll, we'll, we'll still get back to that now what, what do you like most about being an actor what do i like most about being an actor yeah uh, you know it's like reading novels really if you're a you know you want to read if you want to read books and novels you know it gives you that getaway feeling you're not focusing on your own life and the issues around you and the economy and Nigeria and all of that. So, so it's a getaway. It's somewhere you can go to in your head, in your mind, and you're far away from all your issues. So I think that's the major thing about it. Not just for the actor, but also for whoever is watching, you understand? Mm -hmm. So basically, that's it. Interesting. Now, what don't you like about being an actor? You've told us what you like. What don't you like? Hmm. There's nothing I don't like. Okay, well, maybe the time. Uh, sometimes I feel I don't have enough time with my family. Um, but I make up for it because the times when I have with my family sometimes is good too much. So, <laughs> I... Um, I think that's it. I don't think there's anything I don't like about acting. Except, well, working most times in Lagos when you have to go through the traffic to get to set and all of that. Even if you have a driver, you are still inside the car. You're still suffering all that traffic issues. Basically, that's it. How, how about that's when you read maybe un uncomplimentary or negative stuff, you know, about you? You know, does that worry you? No, not really. Um, it gets me, uh, it, it, it wakes me up. I haven't read too many. I think I've been lucky there. <laughs> I haven't read too many bad things about myself. And that's a, that's a totally different side of acting. Totally different. Um, that's, that's what you have to go through if you want to continue to be, you know, have that celebrity status. Um, and uh, and I, I, I try to keep myself separate from all of that. I, I do not like to get involved with anything that would affect me negatively at all. Um, I've had a few hiccups, but basically that's it. I, I always make sure that there's a line between my private life and my work life. Yeah. All, all right. Now, what, what has been the, the most uncomplimentary or unfavorable story you read about yourself? Mm. As. It don't take <laughs> a long time ago. 
long, long time ago. I'll compliment you. Okay, I stole someone's boyfriend. I guess uh, everyone wanted to hear that word. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, people have been stealing other people's boyfriends now, and uh, it hasn't been a big deal. So, well, I don't know. <laughs> but that was did like, you, oh. huh? Did you really steal anybody's boyfriend? I didn't. Do. In fact, I did not steal. <laughs> I did not steal anybody's boyfriend. The person swept me off my feet. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> All right. All right. So, what what has been the the the, the most beautiful thing you've read about yourself the most what beautiful the sweetest thing you've read or heard about yourself oh i get to hear lots almost on a daily basis i get to hear that i'm classy i get to hear that i'm i'm um, i'm a beautiful woman and i begin to wonder oh, look at myself in the mirror <laughs> but you know it talks to but you are <laughs> Yeah, I get yeah. to hear. I get to hear so many good things about people, and it makes me want to live up to it. You understand? I I try not to. I don't want to fail anyone. You know, so I'm fully challenged about it. I work on it every time. I work on it. Interesting. <laughs> now, how, how does it feel to be in the limelight for decades now? <sighs> It comes with a lot of responsibility, as well. I won't lie to you. It comes with, a, you, you know, um, sometimes you go to the market, for instance, and you're like, I hope nobody will recognize me today, kind of thing. I actually went to the shops today, and um, and a lady walks up to me. Ah, I know you. I was like so embarrassed because I was hoping nobody would see me, so I could just shop peacefully. <laughs> you know. Um, I, I think that's basically it, really. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a social responsibility that I try to live up to daily, daily. All right. All right. Now, your, your, your romance with Showbiz could be said to have started with the Charlie Boy show. Tell us about how you got involved with the Charlie Boy show and maybe your fond memories of those days on the Charlie Boy show. Um, it actually didn't start there. It started when I was, I think, um, 11 or 12 okay. in primary school. Um, I was in primary five. Fountain School, Surulere. And by the way, Fountain is celebrated 50 years today. Mm. I should have been on that. I should have been at that program, but I had promised you I'll be here today. Oh, so I couldn't go Thank you that. very much. Thank you very yeah. much. So nice and thoughtful of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm great. Yeah, okay. So, so um, my primary six, I um, I was giving a big character to perform for. I think it was um, end of year party or end of year thing with all the parents and all of that. And then the the arts teacher realized that I wasn't paying attention and I wasn't learning my lines and reported me to my father. My father locked me up in his room for three hours to go and learn my lines. Then he brought out a cane, opened the dog, asked me to come out. Oh yeah, talk your own. He had the cane, he was brandishing that cane. Talk your own, oh yeah. Hey, and if I get any more wrong, pa! <laughs> so I, I will forget that. That was my very first time. And at the end of the day, everyone clapped for me. Because I, 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 I took it serious. Um, and so after that, um, uh, of course, you know, I went into journalism and all of that, and then started working with Charlie Boy um, as a writer for his Charlie Boy show. And when people like uh, a lot of the actors couldn't come on the program, Patrick Doyle, uh, a few of the others, uh, you know, for some reason or the other, and you know how it is, as you, you have to be able to send in your tape early enough for the TV station to watch. So they, before they air it, they have to vet it. And so we were always going late. So one day I just said, come, we don't have enough material for this week. What is going on? Turn this camera around. Wait in the day to set. Maybe try. And that's how I started. This is not the news. So I just wrote out some things. You know, it was a sarcastic thing. And I gave myself a funny name. And it caught on like wildfire. Everyone loved it. I was looking out for it every week. Uh, and then, then we still needed to fill up some more spaces. People like, um, apart from Patrick Doyle, um, 
I will try to remember his name. You know, we were always working together, trying to, you know, put stuff together, getting to do a few skits here and there, drama skits. And, and I would do one or two. And I guess that's how Liz Benson and uh, Jennifer Carey um, discovered me, so to speak. Interesting. You know? Interesting. Now, what would you say was your biggest takeaway from working with Charlie? But what was the greatest or the major lesson you learned from him? Uh, never, never drop a challenge. Never, never drop a challenge. If you are challenged, try and get it done. If you feel, if you feel you you cannot do it, work at it. That's one of the things I learned. Every single one of us who has worked there has learned that. And check check every single one of us out. Yabo Lawani, myself, Mandy Uzonicha. Every single one of us has. You know, whatever we focus on, we give it our best. We really, really work at it. Because he didn't used to like to hear, it's not possible. Anything is possible. Everything is possible. Can you say it's not possible? Don't give me my own possible. Have you tried? And you have to keep trying and trying. And it still stays with me till today. I try. I work at it. I work. I work. I work. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Now, Glamour Girls 1 was the movie that brought you fame and fortune you know i need you to take us back to that movie set and tell us your most memorable experience while filming a uh, glamour girls one where you played the role of doris hmm. um uh, glamour girls one came out in 1994 but it was shot in 1992 um and you remember what was going on in 1992 during the uh, um, MKO Abiola period, the sit at home, all of that, all that crisis. And I remember Kenneth Nibwe, you know, um, this man refused to take no. When you say you can't come to set, what do you mean you can't come to set? I don't, I don't see taxi, I can't get fuel. And he bought, um, he bought, I think he bought a tanker load of fuel and filled up a bus. That he would use to go and pick each and every one of us from our different sets, from our different houses, to come to set. Wow. And I remember how close we all were. Some nights would, some days we work till two a.m., three a.m., and they would still take us home. Each and every one of us must go home. You understand? Mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember how close myself and Liz Benson were. Um, she would always make sure that. Uh, um, I had everything I needed around me. You know, she was the one who taught me how to use my jewelry. Uh, those days, we were not too much into all the heavy makeup and all of that. Um, we were not into wigs and all of that. You know, we had our own clothes. You know, she taught me how to do all of that. And then we had people like Kepi Aperion that set also, um, Bimbo Manuel, and each and every one of them, Igni Sekwe also. Each and every one of us, uh, one of them helped me. And then working on the set itself, uh, I don't know, it must have come naturally because I really wasn't out to impress anyone. I wasn't planning on impressing anyone. In fact, when it came out, I didn't even know. It was the day I was driving from my house to work. I just saw this large billboard. And I saw myself standing there. <laughs> And I had to tell my father, I said, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know, and then I had to go and start reporting myself to my father. Yes, I acted the movie. What? You did what? What do you mean? How did you do that? Mm. But we have surpassed all of that. He was very ashamed, he was very embarrassed, but now he's happy because they call him Gloria <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. <laughs>